I've been suffering since June to about October with various problems related to candida, SIBO, EMF sensitivity, and histamine overload. Candida is a fungal yeast overgrowth that many people are familiar with. SIBO is small intestinal bacterial overgrowth, another problem that a lot of people have where bacteria from the large intestine overgrows into the small intestine and this bacteria can be candida, which it was in my case. EMF sensitivity was from sleeping next to Wi-Fi and routers too much, uh, that can cause insomnia, and histamine overload, histamine intolerance uh, by eating histamine reaction causing foods, like for me it was allergic reactions to milk and dairy, or from histamine reactions due to die off of candida or toxins produced by the candida yeast can also cause histamine overload in the body. So all of these things I've been suffering from have kind of formed this cumulative effect that has been damaging my health for the past few months and I've finally been able to overcome it through my research and experimenting and help from a few of my viewers. I got candida because I was on raw primal, I was consuming a lot of honey, a lot of milk sugar in the context of a high fat diet. So the high fat, the high sugar diet was what caused, and if you look into my diet, it wasn't really a large amount of sugar. Maybe I had one or two tablespoons of honey a day for the course of about two weeks. And then I said, okay, let me try some raw milk. And before this, I never had any problems. So I tried raw A2 cow's milk again, even though I knew I was allergic. And uh, I had just terrible, terrible insomnia for about a week. Could not sleep one wink. And yeah, I overdid it a bit. I drank like half a gallon of milk over the course of two days, uh, probably even more than that. But after that week of not sleeping, I was like, okay, maybe it was the milk. Let's try butter and cream. So same reaction, insomnia for five days. So I was like, all right, this, this can't work. So I went back to eating just regular carnivore. I didn't go back to raw primal. Uh, I went back to eating lightly cooked on the outside and I was still eating a lot of eggs and I still had these problems. I couldn't figure out why I wasn't able to sleep. I had all of these issues. I tried things like uh, only eating sweet potatoes for two days, didn't fix it. Uh, I tried fasting, I tried all of these things. I thought I might have had a parasite. I tried various cleanses with various supplements and I couldn't figure out what was wrong with me. So to be clear, I initially thought it was a histamine intolerance and then I thought it could have been a parasite. I didn't really know it was candida until about a month and a half ago. So I thought it was all of these things until I realized the initial problem was candida overgrowth. So keep in mind, at this time I didn't know it was candida. Uh, so I go on the zero carb carnivore forum and I ask if anyone's had problems related to this. And they say, oh, it's because you eat all these organ meats. Uh, stop eating the organ meats. That's the problem. And I was like, you guys are morons. Can you please explain to me why it would be this? Oh, maybe you're getting too much vitamin A, too much copper. And ironically, at the time of them saying that, I hadn't had organ meats in about two months. So it could not have been the organ meats just by process of elimination. And even then I was like, all right, Maybe there's some merit to that. So I tried taking a ton of zinc supplements to counterbalance the copper. I tried taking calcium supplements, Noth that, nothing to do with it. That did not work. So I'm having all these problems, nothing's working. I'm trying to go back to zero carb carnivore, just eating meat and fat. It's not helping. And uh, I think what ended up happening was for a couple days, I started feeling a little better. And for some reason I thought, all right, let me try sheep or goat milk. Maybe that's works instead of cow's milk. I don't know what the hell I was thinking, but I had this sheep and this goat milk and I had the same exact reaction. I didn't drink a lot of it. I had like one cup of this milk and same terrible insomnia reaction. So I was like, okay, is an allergy. What is the problem here? And I did more parasite cleanses. I did various things. I tried this, I tried that. Nothing seemed to be working. And one day I was like, Maybe it is candida, because one of my viewers was like, oh, it could be candida, but no one thought I had candida because uh, I didn't really eat a lot of sugar, and I was looking up candida symptoms, and this seemed to line up fairly well. So I was like, all right, if this is candida, if I consume a high amount of sugar, it should act up, right? So I went to buy some fresh pressed juice from Whole Foods. I bought like a big thing of apple juice and a big thing of orange juice, and after I drank that juice, 
I was crazy. I was like, like so the symptoms I've had are insomnia, heart palpitations, and in particular, when I close my eyes to try to sleep, I feel like, you know, I could get up and run through a wall. Like, those were the main symptoms I was having. Uh, and the heart palpitations were very bad at certain points. When I had this juice, I was getting these heart palpitations, all these symptoms back again, and I was like, maybe I do have candida. So, uh, I ended up doing like a, a fast of various antimicrobials and water, and some candida did come out. And then I was like, okay, well, these fasts, you know, I was drinking like wormwood with black walnut hull, oregano oil, clove oil, all this nasty stuff. I was drinking these teas. I was putting 10 tea bags in one cup of tea to concentrate it more to kill what was in my stomach. And a little bit of candida did come out. But I was like, I can't do this. So let me just go back to zero carb carnivore because candida feeds off sugar and carbs, right? Wrong, Frankie boy. Candida can live off of fat. And I didn't know this until about a month and a half ago. That's when I was able to finally try to address the problem. And uh, so now I'm like, all right, well, I'm on carnivore and the candida is living off the fat. What the hell do I do? What can I do? And one of my viewers said, okay, try beta in HCL. Maybe your stomach acid is low. And I didn't really think about that at first. And then I was thinking, well, that makes a lot of sense. And so I know I had candida. Then I realized I had SIBO at this point. Uh, before I thought it was just histamines or parasites or possibly EMF. So I get this beta in HCL supplement that increases your stomach acidity. And what that helps do is it makes sure that the food is not fermenting in your digestive tract. And it can also help clear out the bacteria in the small intestine if this is taken on an empty stomach. And this is one of the main things that has solved a lot of my problems. But one thing I want to say to all of you zero-carb carnivore cult dieters that just say eat meat and drink water, uh, thanks for nothing, guys. Uh, and unfortunately, no one was really able to help me out besides uh, Adam. I can't thank you enough for the advice about the beta and HCL and any of my other viewers that might have brought up, oh, candida, this or that. But all the methods and a lot of the advice people were giving me, you people that are into boron and stuff, I'm tempted to just get this boron to shut you guys up, but... There are so many things people were telling me to do and nothing was working and these people had these ridiculous theories and ridiculous ideas about what was wrong with me and it really related back to simple human physiology. Well, you're eating too much food, you're drinking too much water, your stomach acidity is too low and your body's fermenting the food instead of digesting it. it was, the problem was as simple as that. And, uh, you know, whether you know it was my dairy allergy, whether the eggs were giving me SIBO issues, whether the high sugar and high fat is something I shouldn't be doing, whether I wasn't active enough, maybe I was overeating, uh, maybe I would have been fine just drinking one cup of milk a day instead of several cups of milk per day. Either way, at this point, it doesn't really matter. Uh, I kind of feel like I've uh, exhausted everything and I've tried everything and now I know what's wrong and how to fix it. Uh, however, the last two weeks have been the most interesting because I've experimented with various things to drastic measures. So I bought this raw coconut cream because I thought that if I use that as my source of fat, the candida wouldn't act up because coconut kills candida. And this coconut cream was disgusting. I really hate coconut. But so I left it in my fridge for like a week and it fermented because uh, fresh coconut ferments very quick. So I was still having these sleeping problems about two weeks ago. So I was like, maybe I still have some candida overgrowth and problems, even though the beta and HCL seem to be working. So I take a few tablespoons of this fermented coconut and I had the worst stomach pain in my life. And it was bad for about an hour. But I pooped up so much candida. It was ridiculous. I was like, oh my God, I have to eat more coconut. But I really hated this coconut. Anyway, over the course of the next few days, I ended up consuming about half a cup of coconut oil every day and more and more candida came out. But after that initial flush, I was kind of like, okay, uh, most of the candida seems to be gone. But then I went out for my birthday last week. I ended up eating a lot of food. I had a, a bunch of problems. I ate too much. So I wish I didn't go out for my birthday. Uh, so what happened was after I went out for my birthday, I was having the problems again. Uh, I ate too much food, ate food I shouldn't have had. So I was like, all right, let's do this again. So. 
I get more coconut oil and I drank literally two cups of coconut oil. And for those of you guys who like, I do a lot of disgusting things. Drinking two cups of coconut oil might be the most disgusting and repulsive thing I've ever had to force myself to do. So I did that. And not only that, I put some oregano and clove oil in it, but it was so vile. I actually had to throw it up. Um, I was vomiting. I think the, after I went out to eat too much of that night, I vomited a lot of it up. And then the next day after I tried to drink a lot of coconut oil, I vomited it up again. So I was like, okay, the coconut oil is obviously killing the candida. So maybe if I just stop the bullshit and fast for a couple days and then use the coconut oil to kill it, it'll work. And I was like, well, if I, I would rather jump off a bridge than drink any more coconut oil because I hate this stuff. So I was looking up, all right, what are the acids in coconut oil? And is there an alternative? Like, can I just take a bunch of pills? And you can't. Um, MCT oil is like a concentrated version of these acids. Capriac acid, capric acid, lauric acid. I was like, well, maybe MCT oil isn't flavored. It's not as bad. Maybe if I drink the MCT oil, that'll flush out the rest of the candida. And guys, when I say I was miserable and in pain and on the toilet for eight hours, I was literally on the toilet for eight hours. I drank three cups of MCT oil. I got this giant 24 ounce bottle of MCT oil and I drank the whole damn thing. I was like, all right, if I drink this, I'll be miserable for two hours, but then I'll never have these digestive issues again. And it seemed to have worked. Uh, all the rest of whatever candida was there came out of my system. Uh, at least I can only assume so. And uh, one other interesting thing from last week was one of the days near my birthday, I bought some anchovies because I really like anchovies. And I had like a whole jar of anchovies. It wasn't that much, maybe like a few hundred calories of anchovies. And I had this terrible insomnia and, and histamine reaction. So, uh, you know, histamines definitely do tie in, but they're not the whole aspect of the story. You know, me having all of these problems it could have been one thing one day and another thing another day. I could have had, you know, yeast overgrowth causing insomnia one day into SIBO. I could have had EMF sensitivity the next day, sleeping next to my computer. Uh, another day I might have consumed too much food and had too high of a histamine reaction and not slept. So unfortunately these things kind of compound themselves and make it so it's very difficult for you to become healthy, at least in my context. And it's really unfortunate that Candida can feed off of both sugar and fat. Uh, it makes it very, very difficult to get rid of without extreme measures. So uh, these are just things that I did and I'm not recommending you guys do anything. I'm just going to go over kind of what these supplements are and how they affected me. And I'm not going to really give you guys advice on how to use them. If you guys really do want like a how to on how to fix Candida, maybe I'll write a book. Maybe I'll do a little ebook or something. You guys can reach out to me for one on one consultations. I'm just not comfortable giving a lot of this information away as one, it's very, very painful to go through this and difficult to go through this. And two, uh, it's something that I suffered a lot to understand and comprehend. And I rather just not throw it all out there. But uh, these are just things that people suggested to me that helped to various degrees. So the wormwood, the black walnut, you know, the oregano, the clove oil, you guys might be familiar with these things in regards to anti-parasite protocols, but sometimes they're also used for candida. I find that these did not get through the stomach in large enough amounts to damage yeast. These might be effective for a parasite protocol, but definitely not candida. So these are all pretty much useless. Uva ursi, pau diarco, olive leaf tea. I found that pau diarco, what I would do is I'd take like 10 tea bags in one pot I would drink this tea all day. It helped stimulate my stomach. It definitely helped clear me out. I would definitely include Pau di Arco in incredibly large amounts if you're trying to cleanse for a day or two and see how it affects you. I still don't think it's a high enough volume of antimicrobial stuff to actually affect the candida or kill it, uh, but it can definitely help stimulate digestion when you are consuming coconut oil. So I don't have the MCT oil because, well, I drank it all and I had the bottle over there, but my family threw it out. So coconut oil and raw coconut butter are maybe tastier options if you guys don't want to drink MCT oil, but MCT oil is far more effective. 
and also you get like a capriac acid or a capric acid or a lauric acid pill supplement and just take very large amounts of that every day. Dude, I, honestly, I would just mix like, I would mix a ton of coconut oil into some sweet potatoes and eat those. That seems like a really good way to kill candida. But to me, the coconut oil has been the best way to kill the candida. I'm actually allergic to coconut, so I don't really know if consuming large amounts of the coconut oil just killed my stomach because of the uh, the acid content or because I was mildly allergic to it, but uh, it certainly worked. Raw activated charcoal powder. A lot of you guys recommended charcoal powder and I took this once. I don't really think it did everything besides make my poop black. And I'm honestly not a fan of consuming charcoal like uh, in large amounts. I don't think it's a good idea. Potassium citrate magnesium glyconate. So what happens is your body can be depleted of magnesium very quickly when you have a candida or a fungal or a SIBO overgrowth. Also when you salt your food. So almost every single time when my heart was beating out of control, if I took magnesium and potassium, I would feel better immediately. The reason you take potassium is because your body needs it to absorb magnesium. But this would always calm down my heart. I also used seaweed sometimes for the electrolytes in seaweed uh, to calm down my heart, but uh, magnesium glyconate, definitely a lifesaver for the heart palpitations, the die-off reactions. Um, I think the die-off wasn't too severe for me because the extreme that I took this of fasting for two days and then drinking a bunch of coconut and MCT oil literally just killed it so fast and flushed it all out of my system that my suffering wasn't like days of brain fog and stuff. It was more related to just that initial two hours of severe stomach pain on the toilet and some other days, eight hours of severe stomach pain on the toilet. So uh, I think I've kind of gone over a lot of things. Uh, I did actually do a write up for like a candida diet and what I would do uh, as a normal person with normal foods trying to starve off candida. And I think it would be a very effective uh, antimicrobial regimen and pretty practical and tasty foods and recipes that were in it. So uh, maybe I'll write that up in the future sometime and uh, and give, get it out to you guys. But uh, this is the candida story. Uh, everything is solved. And overall, I'm just kind of upset that I even talked about this at all. Um, I feel like I lost a lot of clients because of it. You know, if people think, oh, if this guy is having health problems, why should I take dietary advice from him or this or that? And I've caught a lot of flack from other people in the carnivore community and other YouTubers as well for having candida or SIBO problems. And all of these problems are because I thought there was some merit to the raw primal diet and I tried raw honey and raw dairy and raw eggs and I thought I could adjust to them and I couldn't. I just couldn't. So me experimenting and messing around too much and trying to understand what the healthiest diet truly is led me to suffering from problems because of not looking at the science. I like to prize myself in being objective, trying to understand things, looking at research, and just one time when I take the words of someone as credit as opposed to the science or research, I ended up suffering severely from it. So, you know, over the past few months, I've been a lot more adamant in my understanding of nutrition and, and giving people certain advice and saying certain things because uh, I feel like a lot of people suffer because People don't actually understand what nutrition is. I was reading a topic on Reddit the other day. Is 10 minutes of, of sun exposure on my hands and face enough? And everyone's saying, oh yeah, that's plenty. Like you guys, are, like, I just, people are so confident in their understanding of nutrition and health, yet it's literally the opposite of what they understand. Like, it's it's amazing. It blows me out of my um. A lot of this candida stuff, guys, is on my Amazon shop. Uh, if you guys want to check out my social media, check out my uh, Patreon, all that stuff, uh, check it out below. Uh, if you guys want to reach out to me for one-on-one -on -one consultations, uh, feel free to shoot me an email, frankatofano at gmail.com, or reach out to me on my website. If you need help with candida, you need help with SIBO, I can give you guys a specific protocol that I use that I found worked great.